corn cake. Veracruz style corn cake, whether you're making a brunch or whether you're doing a simple kind of dessert, this will fit the bill. Now, when you go to the farmer's market and buy beautiful ears of corn, that will work perfectly. And that's when I always think of this, but you can also do it in off season because as long as you're not using frozen corn for it, um, pretty much any corn will work here. Now, I have already taken the, the husk off of these uh, corn cobs. Um, there's still a little bit of some silk that I need to get off there. Put that over there. Um, and then I just wanted to show you how I cut the kernels off of the cob. It'll take about four to get your three cups, uh, four ears of corn, good size ears of corn. Okay, so I just cut down fairly close to the cob and just cut down like that, let those fall, then roll it over a quarter of a turn and go in again. One more. And then the final one, I find that this is just the easiest way to do the corn. I've shown on a lot of my television shows other ways of doing corn, but this is kind of the one that I've landed on recently that I just like the very best. So we want to get enough to enough corn kernels, fresh corn kernels to make three cups. So that was these four ears here. And then I'm going to put that into a blender jar. And we're going to blend it. This is a very easy recipe to do. Uh, we're going to blend it uh, with sweetened condensed milk. One of those 15 ounce cans, I believe is what they are. They may be 14 ounce cans, but a regular size can of the sweetened condensed milk. And of course, because it is so thick, you want to go in there with a spatula and get all of it out. Now, this is not only the dairy, but this is also the sweetener for this recipe. Now, that sticky, that sticky stuff I'll set over there. And then I wanna crack three eggs into the blender jar. So this thing can go together really fast and I like to serve it after it has just barely cooled down from the oven. Um, that's when I think it's best, but you can make it ahead. It'll last for days in the refrigerator but I would always rewarm it before I served it again. So I'm gonna put that back here on the blender base and give it a puree. Now, what we're looking for here is a coarse puree, not a smooth puree. We want a little bit of that corn texture in it. Okay, I think that'll do it. Let's just take a look at it and see what the texture of it is like. So, yeah, you can still see some of the pieces of corn, but no whole kernels of corn. It's looking just exactly right. Now, the dry ingredients that go into this mixture here are flour, and I'm using all-purpose flour for this. Um, I'm going to mix that here with some baking powder, a cup of flour, and a teaspoon and a half of baking powder will go in here. Now, I am really very precise when I'm baking, and you should be too, because you can't wing it in baking. Um, usually it's sort of based on a ratio that is a fail-safe ratio, and if you add too much or too little of any of the ingredients, you risk complete failure in your cake. Uh, half a teaspoon of salt will go in here. And now Mexican canela. This is the thing that I wanted to show you and talk to you about because oftentimes you've seen me show the Mexican canela, the Mexican cinnamon, but you haven't seen me grind it the way that I grind it typically in my home. This is my little electric spice mill that I rely on so much in my house. Now it has two cups. This is the larger of the cups, but when you're doing something like ground pepper or ground cinnamon from the stick, then you're gonna want to use the smaller ones here. Now this is the classic Mexican canela. I brought this at the Mexican grocery store. 
It's the flaky stuff, what's oftentimes called Ceylon cinnamon or Vietnamese cinnamon because that's the part of the world that it comes from. Um, and it is so flaky and light that you can just tear it into pieces. So I am going to grind a bunch of it because I always like to have some ground cinnamon on hand, especially for baking. You will be amazed at the smell that comes out of this. The little top will go down on it. And then I will put this part in place and start the grinding. What I just love about this spice mill is you could use it for a coffee grinder as well. Oftentimes the ones that don't have the removable pieces like this, once you've done coffee in it, every spice that you do is gonna smell like coffee or taste like coffee. So these are removable, they come out, you can put them in the dishwasher or wash them by hand, whichever you want. Now, the unveil here, look at this. I just wish you could smell it because this cinnamon is so incredibly aromatic. It's more aromatic, I think, than any other cinnamon. The typical one that we use in the United States is not as aromatic as this. So I am gonna put a, a half a teaspoon of this fresh ground cinnamon. This will really be a player in this corn cake. Put that there. Set that off to the side now, uh, just to combine everything with a little whisk. And now we're ready to do the batter. Okay, so in the mixer, I am going to put, this is a buttery corn cake. So I'm gonna put six ounces of butter here and then <clears throat> turn that on. Now this has to be at room temperature, okay? And you really want everything for this mixture to be at room temperature as well. Move our spice grinder out of the way here so everybody can see. And then the next thing is once this looks light and fluffy, and of course with a stand mixer like this, that light and fluffy will come within a minute or so. Um, I'm going to start to add this, in th this mixture, the corn mixture, in three additions. So about a third of it will go in. Start that. And then we want to incorporate the butter into that. You'll notice that it looked slightly curdled at the beginning. Don't worry about that. It will come together a little bit later on. I'm going to stop the mixer now and add about um, half of the dry ingredients. And I'll use this as an opportunity to scrape down the sides of the mixer bowl because there was some butter up on it and turn that on and mix that in and this is where you're going to see it start to come together it won't look like a curdled mix mixture any longer we want to beat it just long enough to see it all come together uh, now i can see that you can see it looks more like the corn mixture then i'll put half of what remains there, turn that on. Once that is incorporated, add the last bit of the flour mixture. And then at the very end, the last bit of the corn mixture. You notice I'm turning the mixer off in between each one of these because I wanna make sure that it doesn't splash back out. If I left it going, that's what usually happens, at least to me. So I always take the precaution of turning it off before I add the other ingredients to it. Now let's talk about how we're going to bake this. I've got the oven heated to 350 degrees. I'm gonna use a little bit of oil on this pan, but I always, always, always do this with a piece of parchment cut for the base of it here. I use my hand just to oil up the pan first. You could use butter for this, but it seems like a waste to me. So I oftentimes will use oil, then put the piece of parchment down there. I usually oil the parchment by doing that, just flip it back over. And then I want to use a little bit of flour now to coat this pan. So I'll shake it around and then of course do the sides like that. I typically will go to the sink 
and give it a little tap on the edge of the sink. And our pan is ready. Then all we have left to do is to put this mixture into it. This stuff is, is really tasty. Now, if you go to the state of Veracruz on Mexico's Gulf Coast, you will find a lot of torta de lote. That is where I fell in love with it. And then a friend of ours from Puebla, inland, from Veracruz, um, showed, shared with me how she makes it. Now, one of the things that you'll notice the difference between recipes that come from Mexico and the ones that you will find in the United States is the Mexican ones oftentimes don't have any flour in them. And the reason for that, they have more corn, um, the reason for that is that their corn is very different than ours. In fact, it's not sweet corn. It is just field corn, like what would be grown for grain making. And the, the corn is very starchy. So it has all of its starch in it and ours doesn't. So we have to add something like the flour to it to make a cake that resembles very much the one in Puebla, so, or one in Veracruz. So I'm just gonna slide this into the 350 degree oven. This is a very pudding-like texture almost. And so it takes a long time to cook. It will cook for about 50 to 60 minutes. Um, when you notice that it's firm, not jiggly in the center, when you could put a toothpick in it and it comes out, basically clean, then you know your corn cake, your torta de lote is ready. My beautifully golden corn cake has come out of the oven. Uh, it was very springy in the center. It's cooled for about 15 minutes now, so I'm going to turn it out. You know what I like to turn it out onto is a cooling rack that has a sill pad on it so it doesn't stick to the cooling rack. You could put a piece of parchment paper or none of those things. Um, I've done that as well. So I, actually, I'm going to turn this upside down now on this because I'm going to invert the whole thing. So uh, with my towel up underneath here, I am going to grab it and then just invert it this way, okay? And I heard it just drop there. So putting that piece of, that piece of parchment paper there is all as my insurance policy. So it's come out looking very nice and then We'll just peel that parchment off. And then right away, because this isn't the pretty side of this cake, I'm gonna flip it now onto um, a, a serving platter, doing the same kind of flip. And then I have that sill pad there, of course, as a way of getting easy release. Center it nicely there. I think that looks beautiful. You could put some powdered sugar on it. This is a very simple corn cake, so it's not something that you put frosting on or anything like that. A very homey dessert, or as I say, I love to serve this as a brunch dish. But let's cut a piece of it so that you can see what the texture of this is like. So I'm gonna cut a nice kind of hefty portion of it. And, ah, that looks so beautiful. Um, I've got a plate here, a little of uh, like Mexican crema, which is more like creme fraiche. This is what we make at our restaurant, um, making using sour cream as a starter, but in heavy cream, letting that sit for about 24 hours to culture. And that would be a very memorable mouthful. Think about this when you see fresh corn in the market.